5. Pay yourself first. The power of self-discipline if you cannot get control of yourself, do not try to get rich. It makes no sense to invest, make money, and blow it. It is the lack of self-discipline that causes most lottery winners to go broke soon after winning millions. It is the lack of self-discipline that causes people who get a raise to immediately go out and buy a new car or take a cruise. It is difficult to say which of the 10 steps is the most important. But of all the steps, this step is probably the most difficult to master if it is not already a part of your makeup. I would venture to say that personal self-discipline is the number one delineating factor between the rich, the poor, and the middle class. Simply put, people who have low self-esteem and low tolerance for financial pressure can never be rich. As I have said, a lesson learned from my rich dad was that the world will push you around. The world pushes people around, not because other people are bullies, but because the individual lacks internal control and discipline. People who lack internal fortitude often become victims of those who have self-discipline. In the entrepreneur classes I teach, I constantly remind people to not focus on their product, service, or widget, but to focus on developing management skills. The three most important management skills necessary to start your own business are management of 1. Cash flow. 2. People. 3. Personal time. I would say the skills to manage these three apply to anything, not just entrepreneurs. The three matter in the way you live your life as an individual, or as part of a family, a business, a charitable organization, a city, or a nation. Each of these skills is enhanced by the mastery of self-discipline. I do not take the saying, pay yourself first, lightly. The statement, pay yourself first, comes from George Clayson's book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Millions of copies have been sold. But while millions of people freely repeat that powerful statement, few follow the advice. As I said, financial literacy allows one to read numbers, and numbers tell the story. By looking at a person's income statement and balance sheet, I can readily see if people who spout the words, pay yourself first, actually practice what they preach. A picture is worth a thousand words. So let's review the financial statements of people who pay themselves first against someone who doesn't. Study the diagrams and see if you can pick up some distinctions. Again, it has to do with understanding cash flow, which tells the story. Most people look at the numbers and miss the story. Do you see it? The diagram reflects the actions of individuals who choose to pay themselves first. Each month, they allocate money to their asset column before they pay their monthly expenses. Although millions of people have read Clayson's book and understand the words, pay yourself first, in reality they pay themselves last. Now I can hear the howls from those of you who sincerely believe in paying your bills first. And I can hear all the responsible people who pay their bills on time. I am not saying be irresponsible and not pay your bills. All I am saying is do what the book says, which is, pay yourself first. And the previous diagram is the correct accounting picture of that action. If you can truly begin to understand the power of cash flow, you will soon realize what is wrong with the previous diagram, or why 90% of people work hard all their lives and need government support like social security when they are no longer able to work. Kim and I have had many bookkeepers, accountants, and bankers who have had a major problem with this way of looking at, pay yourself first. The reason is that these financial professionals actually do what the masses do, they pay themselves last.